Today, I'm talking materials, specifically for my upcoming online workshop, Beyond Blank Pages. Uh, so you might be wondering, like, you know, what materials am I going to need for this? So maybe you've signed up, maybe you're thinking about signing up. Uh, you can find a list on the website in the description of the workshop, but maybe, you know, you want something a little bit more specific. Maybe you have some questions, maybe you're not sure. So that's what I want to do today. I want to try to answer any questions that you might have about materials, share maybe what I'm going to use, and then also give you some alternatives in case you don't have everything on that list. So let's go ahead and talk about materials. So the first thing you're going to need is some kind of book. So this is all about beyond the blank pages, right? So um, it doesn't have to be a brand new book. Maybe it has something going on, but it should have some blank pages. So any kind of little sketchbook, journal, planner will work. Um, I know a lot of folks have handmade books. So this book was, was a gift to me um, from a friend. And so, um, you know, it's like I might want to use this. But also, I'm like looking at it, and I'm not sure about the paper. It looks like really good paper, but there's also a lot of pages. Um, so if this is something where you're like, oh, I want to complete a book, then think about the number of pages. So a lot of blank sketchbooks have a couple hundred pages in it. And so, you know, you, th this might be a good class to get it started. But then, you know, is it something where you're going to want to finish it? Um, you know, a lot of folks have the spiral bound books. And you know, spiral bound's great. Um, the only problem is that I don't I don't like the fact that it has a spiral. This has an added thing where it's perforated, so I probably wouldn't want to use this because it the pages are meant to come out. Um, if you want to use loose pages, you can. Uh, but you know, there's there's that. Um, this one I've done some things in it already, and this is a mixed media book. And it's got some really nice pages. Again, it's got a lot of pages, though. So maybe I want to use something that is has a heavier pages. So these are all kind of blank or, or partially blank and things I can use. I do want to show you a couple that I have used before, and that would be great. So the, the thing is, maybe you're into making your own. So I'm working with something you know here that's a little bit smaller. Yeah, this one's filled already, but... You know, I hand stitched this, but it, the great thing is it doesn't have a lot of pages. So I can control the number of pages that are in it. The other one I want to show you is this one. This one I actually started and did it as part of the in-person class um, that I taught um, a couple years ago with this. So I just want to give you a quick little flip through. This is a Stillman and Burn mixed media book. It's their Alpha series. But uh, I like it. The pages are a little bit on the thin side. Um, then the other thing is that there's a ton of pages. So I didn't actually finish this during the week whenever I taught the class. Um, the, the beginnings of the book really got developed. And so all that you're seeing here have been were, were things that happened in the book um, while I was doing the, the workshop. And so... Um, yeah, you can kind of see then some of the stuff that uh, we'll be kind of working with. Um, you know, so I didn't finish it, and there were a lot of uh, blank pages. I've worked a little bit in it since then, and I think I used it for some of my uh, live streaming and things. But, you know, I like this size. So that's the other question is, like, size. Use any size that you want. I like this. This is a 5.5 by 8.5. Um, one of the things I like about it is that it's a different size than what I typically use. I usually use a large um, 11 by 14 inch book for my everyday journal. So, but this isn't an everyday journal, so I, I like it for, for being small. And so I kind of recommend going small with the book. All right, let's talk about paint. Um, I use a couple different things as far as paint. Uh, I like water-based paints, and so I have these paints by Derwent, and they are part of their Ink Tense set, uh, their Ink Tense series. So they have uh, you know a wide variety of these are two different palettes, so there's 24 different colors in it. Um, I like them because they go along with the Ink Tense pencils that I use. 
Uh, but any kind of watercolor can work. And if you're like, oh, what, you know, I don't have a good, good set of watercolor, just the most inexpensive work. I mean, I used to use Prang a lot, P-R-A-N-G. Um, another one to use, Crayola. I mean, you don't need top quality materials. If you have them, great, use them. If you have liquid watercolors or tubes of watercolors, feel free to use them. Um, so I have that, and along with the, the Inktense paints, sorry, I'm just trying to keep it from glaring, um, I have the Inktense pencils, and I keep them in a, a separate bag, but I have a whole bunch of these. And these are not colored pencils, they are water-soluble pencils. And so watercolor pencils of any sort will work. I used to use Prismacolor a lot, but I like the Inktense pencils, and like I said, I've got a whole bunch more in there. Um, but they are water soluble. Um, they work just like watercolor pencils, but the ink tense is more like water soluble ink. And so um, using those again, these are kind of top quality. Uh, the the paints they're not super expensive. I think they were like 20, 25 bucks for each one of those. So um, you know it's a nice good set. Again, though you know they're not cheap. The pencils though are pretty expensive. So um, if you don't have the top quality. Use what you have, and you don't need these. I mean, th these are my personal favorites, so I use this combination. The paints, which is very much like watercolor, the pencils, which are very much like watercolor pencils, but you can use acrylics, um, and they don't have to be the, the high quality acrylics either, so use what you have. So of course, you know, having a wide variety of paint brushes um, that you can put the paint on, that you can do different things with. Um, I love having a really big, flat brush. Um, this is, yeah, this is a flat, um, really covers a lot of, uh, a lot of pa paper. Um, but I have different kinds. I have rounds. I have a filbert in there. I've got some, uh, liners and some small brushes as well. So just having a nice variety of brushes, definitely, definitely going to need that. All right. You're going to need some pens and pencils. Uh, one of my favorite pens is the Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pens. The nice thing is that they come in different thicknesses. So I have a couple of different blacks. I ha actually have a lot more. And I have a few of the colors here. I don't have all of them out, but they come in different colors. And the nice thing is that they're fairly waterproof. They maybe fade a little bit if you paint over them, but not too much. Um, you know, some kind of regular pencil, graphite. It can be drawing pencils or just your standard number two pencil. Uh, I love the Uniball White Signa, uh, oops, Signa Gel Pen. Uh, draws really well. It's one of, uh, it's a favorite of a lot of mixed media artists. The thing is, it does clog up and dry up pretty quickly. So um, once you start using it, you really don't want to stop using it. You want to use it until it kind of runs out. Um, paint markers and paint pens. This is a, um, an acrylic paint marker are always great to have. Metallics. Um, Sharpies are, are a really good uh, thing to use. And I recently got into brush pens. So this is the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. I've been really digging that kind of lately. But just a wide variety. And you don't need to have these specific pens uh, and markers. I mean, use whatever markers you have. Uh, again, you know, Crayola works really well. Very bright colors. Yeah, they're not waterproof, but that could be kind of interesting with it. So some pens and pencils. All right, so you might need some basic tools as well. Um, I love, you know, got to have a handy dandy pair of scissors. Uh, if you're going to be cutting very exact sp specific things, a craft knife uh, is definitely something you want to have. Again, not totally required. Definitely I would have a pair of scissors, but craft knife, you don't need it. If you're going to use a craft knife, make sure that you have something to cut on, like a cutting mat or a old piece of cardboard or an old magazine. If you're going to be measuring or drawing or cutting straight lines, a ruler, especially a metal ruler, is great to use to cut straight lines. Um, I love a wooden spoon, but a bone folder works really well. This is for rubbing and burnishing. And uh, a, a spatula or scraper is always great to have. Again, not necessary. I'd say if you definitely need to have something, scissors and, of course, a glue stick. Now, if you're using acrylic paint, you don't want to use um, a glue stick, but this works great with the paints and the stuff that I'm going to be using. And my this is my go-to brand is Uhu, and so um, something to think about. Uh, if you are using acrylics, you, you can use an acrylic medium for 
glue. So those are just some of the material or some of the tools and equipment that I'm going to have around. And one of the other things I, I love to have is some packing tape and we're going to do some image transfers. Um, this is an extra wide roll. Of course, got it from Office Depot, um, but any kind of packing tape will work uh, for the image transfers. Also, if you wanted to tape things into your journal, even though I don't typically do that because it's such a shiny surface, but yeah, packing tape is definitely something that you can have. If you don't have it, you know, again, don't worry about getting a roll of it, um, but it's pretty inexpensive and uh, it's going to come in handy for a certain type of image transfer. I would definitely have a wide variety of papers, everything from small pieces of drawing paper uh, to colored paper, construction paper works great, or scrapbook paper, um, even painted paper. Maybe you have some things that you've painted on or done some jelly prints of. Uh, I love having tracing paper for a variety of things to write on, and of course for tracing. And I always love to have some bigger drawing paper as well. But having a wide variety of papers is going to allow you to do lots of different things in your books. All right, let's talk about printmaking materials. So this is something that, like, if you don't have, don't feel like you have to buy it because it is a bit of an investment. But um, there's a couple different things. The first thing is, like, stenciling. And so if you do have some stencil film, this is... Uh, graphics, uh, blue stencil, heavy duty film, easy to cut, great to use to create your own stencils, but feel, you know, you don't have to make your own stencils, uh, but you can also use paper or you can use a variety of other materials, but even just a stiff paper works great for making simple stencils. So I've got some of this, but you know, I'll, I'm going to show you how to cut using this, but also you can do it, like I said, with some paper or poster board or anything like that. Um, the other materials are uh, block printing. And so the first thing is having something to carve into, having something to make a block out of. And I like this Speedball Speedy Carve, but there's lots of other brands out there. Um, and I buy the smallest. This is a three by four, and then I cut it up. So I've cut it up into different sizes. And you can create different stamps out of it. And so I, I like to kind of create my own stamps. Um, and then if you're going to carve, you're going to need one of these. This is a uh, linoleum block cutter, uh, but you can carve, even though this is kind of more of a rubbery material, really soft, easy to carve, you want to carve it with one of these. And uh, so it comes with a handle, and then if you hear, the blades are in the handle, so you twist that part out, and you have all the blades in there. And there's different kind of blades that you can use to carve. And so I'm going to just demo how to do that. If you, but like I said, it's a it's a little bit of an investment. I mean, the handle and cutter isn't very much. This isn't very much. But if you're not not if you know you're not going to use any of this stuff ever again, don't buy it. You know, either buy stamps that you can use. Um, maybe you have a whole slew of stamps. But if you want to carve your own, um, and you think you're going to do it for the long term, yeah, buy some of this. You can cut it up, make your own custom sizes, and then you can carve into it. Um, the alternative, I'll tell you that as I put this away, um, the alternative is to use cardboard. And not the corrugated cardboard, even though you can do some interesting stamping with that, but like the thin cardboard. I'm gonna show you how you can take that, or you can use um, styrofoam. So, uh, you know, the styrofoam from the meat trays, that works really well. And uh, you can also buy some actual printing foam, but usually you have to buy a whole lot of it. Um, but yeah, those are a couple of different alternatives to the, the carving is using um, cardboard or foam. And so probably the final thing that you want to think about with this is to have, to have fodder, the ephemera that you're going to use. I love old papers, old book pages, even just some craft paper from a, a package. Um, I love maps, um, photocopies of things, um, magazines and magazine pictures. I just have all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, photographs, things that I printed on uh, off the computer, but also think about some like old artwork. So do you have I've got some artwork down here that I use that I've done, you know, um, 
experiments, things that I've tried that didn't work out, things that I can use. So, you know, just having a variety of materials that you can cut and glue. Um, really, you know, there's so much that you can do. So, anyway. Well, I hope that answered any questions that you have about materials for this class beyond the blank pages. If you still have some questions, feel free to shoot me an email. If you'd like to register because you haven't signed up yet, click the link in the description below and I'll see you hopefully come in March 15th. I'm excited about it. Hope you are too. So just let me know if you need anything else and thanks so much.